Okay, I think we can make a start. Um, first of all, welcome everybody to our fourth fourth uh, webinar in this series, which is about it's been focusing on experiences in um, delivering training in a virtual environment. Uh, this this fourth one is a little bit different in that we're actually we're really privileged here to have some experts. In, in delivering of training and developing of materials for from Argentina. And this particular webinar is the first time we've got a complete spread of experiences from different perspectives, uh, from pilots and controllers and cabin crew and engineers or, or technicians. So it's, a, it's gonna be a different type of webinar where hopefully we can get a, a feeling of what our colleagues in Argentina are doing. So I'm going to pass you over to uh, Cecilia, my colleague in the board, in IKEA board. And Cecilia will introduce you to her, her team who are delivering this, this webinar. Thanks, Cecilia. Thank you, Michael. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining, uh, for joining us today. Um, as you can see, uh, and as Michael has just said, uh, we are going to be part of a panel in which uh, we are going to listen to different experiences from uh, different professionals in, in Argentina, of course, teaching aviation English, um, aviation English teaching. Um, but before we get started with the uh, objectives of the webinar and with the um, formal, um, let's say, the formal introduction of our, our speakers today, I'd like you to ask, uh, to ask you, are you ready for takeoff? Uh, well, I hope, I hope you are. Um, I'd like you to go back in time and think of this. Think of the moment in which you uh, were asked uh, or, or were invited, perhaps, to go virtual teaching. Uh, that moment when you, um, perhaps due to the pandemic or perhaps not, perhaps it was before, uh, when, you, when you had to move from your traditional classes into your, uh, perhaps uh, into a, a virtual uh, modality. So how did you feel? How did you feel when you were asked um, or when you were forced due to the situation we all know or when you were invited to go virtual teaching. And uh, well, we'd like you to um, share your feelings with us through this app. I don't know if you're familiar with this app. It's called Answer Garden. And uh, we expect you um, share your feelings, your answers with us. And, and we hope that these uh, answers will grow in the garden. Uh, we hope for that. If you have a look at the chat box, um, let me uh, open, let me share this. I will share with you this link, okay? So I'm going to ask all of you to click on this app, Answer Garden. When you click on the, when you click on the, on the app, um, a web page will be open and there you will have the question and can you please type in one or two words uh, or perhaps a short phrase about your feelings the good thing about answer garden is you can type in as many answers as you want or you, you can you can uh, repeat your feelings if you if you like so um, we invite you to go there and now I hope you have, uh, you have found the way. Remember, go there, answer your question. How did you feel when the first time you had to go virtual teaching? Oh, I can, we can all, uh, we can have a look at the answers now. Can you see them? Well, it's, um, it's, I think it's 
comforting to perhaps uh, to see that some of us had the same uh, desperate feelings or perhaps we, we felt a little lost at the beginning. Um, it's also, um, it's also interesting that some of you have uh, seen this as a, as a challenge. Well, uh, perhaps accepting this with a more, uh, with a more positive attitude. Um, I can see that some of you um, talked, talk about a change. Definitely, this has been a change. Uh, and well, uh, some, of, some of you also uh, talk about or oh look at this very interesting it's constantly it's constantly changing very interesting because um, most of you at, at least uh, have felt challenged this is the biggest uh, the biggest word well we hope that during the uh, that during the this webinar we can address some of those feelings and perhaps you can find some answers, um, especially to those not so positive uh, feelings you had at the beginning. So, which are our objectives for today? Well, first of all, we wanted to generate an opportunity to share successful experiences or some experiences that have worked well when teaching online, when teaching aviation English online, uh, generated by COVID circumstances or not, okay? Some of them uh, perhaps not. Uh, to give you the chance, if you want to, if you consider it, to adapt and adopt those experiences and to expand on the learning community through a community or through, through a common network, okay? Later on, we are going to tell you how we are going to uh, try and build or perhaps reinforce this community network we are part of. All right, which is our planned route? Very quickly, I will tell you, as uh, Michael said at the beginning, this is quite of a different webinar. We are having a panel with experts, Norma, Claudia. Uh, then we are going, as you can see from here, uh, we are going to get uh, two stopovers, if you like, uh, in which we are going to get um, a short period for questions and answers, okay? Then we're going to listen to Antonella and finally, Christina. And I suppose that at the end, we are going to uh, approach and land safely. Um, let me tell you this, which is, I think, very important. Um, the aim, as we said before, was to share experiences. We are not... Um, each of these speakers is going to talk about a particular teaching situation and how they uh, cope with uh, a challenge, okay, in this new reality. Um, they are going to show us some tools, um, but they will not, uh, because of the time we have, they will not go into detail about how to use the tool, but of course, these tools will be um, shared with you and uh, they, will, uh, they will tell us how they worked okay, well in their particular teaching contexts. So um, as you listen to them uh, as we go along, please, if you have questions, uh, type them uh, on the chat box. We will keep an eye on the chat box. And during the question and answer periods, we will recover those questions and one, um, one recommendation is, if you have a question to, for Claudia, for instance, please address the question directly to the speaker so that then we can recover the question and we can uh, address uh, each question to the appropriate speaker, if you see what I mean, okay? So this is our route. And, and we've got some safety instructions, of course. Don't you miss flying? Well, I hope that this resembles the flight uh, a little. Through the webinar, please silence your microphones. You know that. If you're disconnected, please use the link again and wait to be uh, admitted. Somebody will uh, also be keeping an eye on the waiting room so you can uh, enter the room again. Use the chat box for questions, okay? As I told you before, we will address them during the question and answer periods. And some other questions will be perhaps answered um, straight away, depending on the, 
on the type of question. And also, if you, if you like, take down notes of any doubts or further questions you have, we may use them at the end of the flight, okay? Well, and now, with, any, with no, more, um, no more introductions, I would like to introduce Norma, our first speaker. Norma, eh, bravo, she is, um, she is uh, IKEA's vice president. She has been working as a language expert in the aviation field um, for about 15 years. She has been a test designer and the coordinator of the language proficiency test for air traffic controllers in Argentina. Um, at present, she is um, coordinating the language proficiency training program for all operational, uh, operational personnel at EANA, which is um, Argentina's air navigation service provider. So uh, Norma, we'll, we will be happy to hear you now. Okay, thank you. Well, hello everybody. And thank you very much for joining us today and sharing our experiences. And I hope it will help you uh, to improve perhaps your teaching practices. I will share my, my screen with you, okay, to start with this first presentation. Okay. Here we are. All right. Can you see my screen? Cecilia, is everything okay? Yes, wonderful. Okay, good. Well, as Cecilia has said, um, I train or we train in EANA air traffic controllers. EANA is our air navigation service uh, provider. And we are responsible for the training of 990 air traffic controllers who are distributed in 54 airports throughout the country. As you can see in the map, our country is quite big, okay? And we have a lot of people working in the vast territory in our country. Um, due to this COVID pandemic and the lockdown that was set up in our country uh, around March, we were forced to migrate our teaching strategies from a learning approach to a virtual learning approach, which implied a big uh, challenge for our teachers, okay? to adapt these teaching strategies face-to-face -face mostly to a virtual scenario. One of the various tools that we use to deal with this uh, challenge is the one that I want to, to present to you today. It is called Quizzes for Teachers. <laughs> and it is one of the uh, tools that resulted um, very positive for us because of the benefits it offers. Uh, these benefits are related to uh, teaching tools, practice, exercises, and also assessments. Quizzes offers you a free version of the tool uh, which can be upgraded to a super version uh, <laughs> that, of course, you have to pay, okay? You have to upgrade this uh, basic version to uh, a super one, paying $2 a month, or also you have the possibility to pay annually. Um, what is the advantage that you have that you can access to better tools for asynchronous learning. The one we have is the basic version and it proved to be very useful. This slide shows you how you see the panel, yes, of the dashboard when you enter the quizzes link. Of course, you need to sign up 
to be able to get your details to log in. And as you can see here in the purple buttons, you have different tools to develop your games, your quizzes, and also your lessons. You have the create button, which allows you to, of course, design your exercises. Then you have a start a live quiz button, which allows you to play this game with your students online. Or you can choose to assign this game of this quiz as homework. Then if you go to the uh, menu that we have below the create button, you can see that you have the possibility to explore. What does it mean? It means that you have the possibility to access to different games and quizzes other professionals in teaching have, decide, have created, have designed, and you can share them online also. Then you have my library. This is the virtual space in which you have all your productions. Then you have reports, uh, which allows you to see how your students are performing in the different uh, activities that you have assigned to them. And then the different version of your classes. Here I'm sharing with you my library, and these are the different activities I have prepared for my students. And this is the way you look your panel when you enter quizzes for teachers. Once you have uh, entered and you have registered to use this tool, you start creating your quizzes or your lessons. If you decide to create a quiz, you have different possibilities of activities, such as multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blanks exercises, a poll also, or open-ended exercises. Or you can design a lesson. A lesson gives you the possibility to prepare a presentation and to choose or select as many slides as you need to make this presentation attractive for your students. So let's see how it works, okay? This quiz is for teachers, as I told you before, gives you the possibility to start a live game. So let's see how this works. Here you have an example of a lesson and a quiz that I have designed. So when I decide to share it online, this purple button I showed you before leads you to a link, okay, a students should go to. And of course they have a code to enter this activity. The same happens with, you have a quiz. The procedure is exactly the same. And on the right, you can see how your student sees this activity on, their, on the screen of their devices. So what I'm going to do now is to show you Mm -hmm. Let's share it again. Here. Can you see it? Ceci, do I have yes. your okay? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So here you have the screen that I've told you about before. You log in. You enter your personal details. I will enter my email address and of course my password. And it takes you directly to your 
your space. And here you will be able to see to see my library. If I choose one of the activities I have prepared for my students, let's go to teachings, for example. You have here the possibility to start a live quiz or to assign it as homework. If I decide to play it online, I can choose different approaches. I can either choose to use the team approach in which participants answer at their own space, but of course, scores are grouped by teams. Then I have the classic way, the possibility to play it in a classic mode or a test. So this is good also for assessment, okay? Because it gives you all the necessary security to conduct a serious assessment procedure. So let's choose the classic. And we have eight questions here. So let's prepare to share it with students. And when you're sharing your screen with your students, they will be able to see these uh, details. So they have to join myquiz.com, okay, on their devices, and then enter this code. And you will see as a teacher that the name of the participants will appear below the start button. When all of them have joined, you can start playing the game online. Good. Let's go back to our presentation. And let's continue. So this is the way you will be able to play online with your students. What about a lesson? If we want to share a lesson with them, it is exactly the same procedure. And here I have taken some screenshots for you to see how you see the lesson on your screen and how the students will see the same lesson on their screens. So in the first photograph, you can see how the instructions for the students appear. And on the right, you can see how your student sees the lesson on his or her screen. For this lesson, I have chosen two activities. Choose a topic and speak about it for three minutes, and then a photo description. And on the small screen uh, photographs, you can see how your students see the same activity on their screens. Once this lesson is finished, as a teacher, you exit the activity and on the student screens, the result of their performance will appear. So this is also very interesting because the students can get immediate feedback of their performance to get their results. Good. What happens if you decide to assign this activity you have created as homework? Once you enter the assigned homework, you will get a link. So you email this link to your students, well, together with instruction, uh, obviously, of the exercise they have to perform. And let's see here. Okay, and your students through that link enter the exercise, pressing starting game. And here I have prepared a video for you to see 
how your students play the game. In this case, this is a competition. The instructor that has prepared this exercise has decided uh, to create a competition for a group of students. Have a look at it. We have 11 questions in total. So this exercise has been or is based on a listening activity. They have already done, obviously. Uh, so they have listened to um, radio telephony communication. And this is the competition based on that information. As you can see, while they are getting correct answers, they are summing up points. And they also get some power up devices to improve their performance. This is the way students see the game on their screens. Okay, so let's continue. And as uh, I told you at the beginning of the presentation, this tool is also very useful for assessment because when you finished with the activity, you have the possibility to view the reports. And these reports allow you to see how participants have performed in their exercises. You can see this bar, okay? And also, you can, uh, you have an analysis of each question. And in some cases, they show you the mistakes they have had. And this has helped helped us a lot for remedial work because we can work on the mistakes made so we can improve their performance through remedial work. And something very interesting also in this tool is that you can print or download the reports. So it is also helpful or it has been resulted to be helpful, helpful for us to keep register of their performance. So, um, what is interesting about this um, kind of tools, okay, these apps? I am completely convinced that we have to be creative, okay, in this uh, period. So we have to be creative when planning our virtual lessons and when planning our strategy, strategies for assessing, and also when designing these lessons and designing the testing period. Uh, so I hope that it will help you to be creative. It is not only the, all the, uh, the only yes, a tool that allows you to apply all these uh, needs, but also you have a variety of, uh, of tools that may help you to improve your virtual classes. So it's only a question of uh, research, yes? Surf the web to find them and get the most of them. Okay, Cecilia, that's all. Okay. Over uh, to you. you. Thank you, Norma. Um, we we already have some some questions, but we will leave them for the question and answer period. Okay. 
Uh, thank you very much. And now we will go to um, our second uh, presenter, Claudia, uh, Claudia Alguera. Uh, she has been a professional of English language teaching for more than 18 years. She used to be a, a crew member herself, and, and she has worked with uh, crew members. She has been a rater and an interlocutor, okay, since 2011. And at present, she's the head coordinator of the English for Aviation Training Center at APTA, Air Aircraft Technicians Association in uh, Buenos Aires. So she is also a specialist teaching uh, mechanics and technicians, and I, I guess also pilots, but well, today focusing on uh, the technicians. Is, is that true, Claudia? Uh, over yes. to you. <laughs> That's right, okay. Cecilia. Thank you. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, well, I'll start sharing my screen and presentation as well. So, uh, First of all, I'll be briefly tell you about our challenges and ideas on how we've been dealing with online learning during pandemic at the Technicians Association. I will show you a couple of tools uh, on how to make your classes or materials more suitable to online lessons. And finally, we'll go over some highlights and conclusions that were helpful or effective to us, right? So, a week had gone by from our course start this year when lockdown was declared and we quickly uh, saw we had to migrate all our face-to-face -face lessons to an online format. We already had online lessons, but it was a very small percentage of our courses. And now the first two big challenges were splitting large groups because it would be impossible to teach 12, 14, 15 people in an online session, and also merging one-on-one -on -one lessons uh, to make sure that we could adapt all this online format and our timetable and to make it suitable to our student body, which is about 80 people. So additional decisions and challenges that have been faced during this time include connectivity issues, um, also the access our students would have to technological devices, their knowledge on how to use them, the appropriateness of the platforms, whether having synchronous or asynchronous lessons, but summarizing when we go over all these things we've experienced, uh, the main obstacle has been, and this was quite surprising in a way, how our students use technology in their social networks, let's say Facebook, TikTok, you name it, how we perceive them, in which they are quite experts at it, and reality, how our students use technology when learning online. <laughs> so this was quite different or, or a bit of an extra challenge. But well, uh, having all this in mind and said, we noticed that first of all, we needed to go through some misconceptions. The fact that uh, teaching face-to-face -face and an online lesson is completely different, it's not really the same, and we need to adapt methodology and delivery. Uh, also in terms of the use of materials, many of the materials need at least to be adapted. And the fact that teaching online, it is not just about providing interactive exercise forms or asynchronous assignments, but we thought that there was much more to it and there were more things we had to do. So initially we started to reflect, okay, uh, if we consider the way people learn and acquire language, and we know from neuroscience that naturally our human brain is created and designed to work socially and to function holistically, it needs to work in a safe environment where we can trust and have low level of stress and use of creativity. We knew and we needed to see that in order to activate all these emotional circuits and promote cognition, we needed to go a little bit of an extra mile when doing it online because you might think, okay, how do I do all of this that it comes so naturally when we are face to face if we are uh, sharing and seeing our faces through the screen, right? But well, I'm going to show you now a couple of examples on, let's say, methods that we use to adapt some of our classes or materials to make them more appealing or interesting and engaging when online. So the first one 
is about a tic-tac-toe activity. This is something we will normally do in our face-to-face -face lessons over the board with our students coming back and forth. And it's a good technique maybe for a warm-up or a lesson review or vocabulary review. So we said, okay, how can we adapt it and still make this kind of activity online? And I'm going to show you a little video on how to do that. So basically, this is about how to use an interactive game at whiskonline.com. This is a website you can access and sign up or sign in on your account. It's free of charge. You can use your existing social media account or create a new one. And basically, once you're in, what you're going to do is to create your own game. Uh, it is possible also to see other other teachers or other people's games or activities that you can use. This is an example we have used to, with our technicians in order to review materials. Uh, this is the way our students would see it. We will select whether we want to use one player or two, or you can use two teams. We do it in different ways. We can share the screen, for example, in Zoom or Skype, and the teacher can command it, let's say, or we can share the link and each of the students individually can access the game on their own side. So as you can see, the prompts pop up. They have to make the right selections. If the answer is, co is correct, the symbol will be inserted in the grid, whatever they want, and then it will be the other person's turn. If they miss the turn, then you'll go to the other person or team. And of course, the objective is that they complete a tic-tac-toe while they are reviewing vocabulary or a previous lesson, right? So there we can see the example on how they accomplish it. Uh, this is the kind of activity that has worked for us. We noticed it was engaging and they enjoy it. And we are using the benefits of gamification. Basically here, I'm showing you how to create it. I created a tic-tac-toe, but you have other possibilities on this website. You will name your game as you please. You can add a description. And then obviously, if you're creating a tic-tac-toe, you're gonna have to come up with nine questions. For each of the questions, you must provide the correct answer and another answer so the students will be able to select later on. You will save and continue. And once you're done, you will see here that in the main page, you're gonna have access to your games or you can create a new one and edit it. So it's a way of giving a little twist to some of these activities you can do at some point in the class, right? Now I'm going to show you another example that we use with augmented reality. Okay, this is more of a task or idea that you can use in order to transform or adapt existing material. For instance, our students have this kind of page you see there in one of their manuals and in one of their books. So when we, for example, work with airline parts, we saw it would be interesting to do it in a different way when they are online. So uh, this kind of app allows you to create from paper or image-based project something that will come up maybe in their phones or in their computers in a different way or in a more interesting or engaging way. Uh, I put an example here of two augmented reality apps like Unitar or Layer. I'm going to use Unitar and show you now in the video, but there are many apps available in the market which you can use and it's a really interesting twist and something different you can do. So let me show you in the video how it works. So basically you're going to uh, access this website, unitar.com. Once you're there, you can create also your account for free. You will add a new project. In this case, I did an image-based project. So once you do this selection, you are going to browse or drop and drag your file. You can choose any picture or any PDF you are interested in using. I'm just putting up there an example. And basically here on the left, you have different buttons on things you can add. 
either videos, images, audio, you name it. You can include anything you want for the students to see when they get to that scan. So once you add your button, you're going to preview it. I'm going to show you my existing project, which is the one of airplane parts I showed you before. You can see there I inserted a video, a model. And when I save it and preview it, I'm going to be able to have a link or a QR code to share with my students. And basically once I share, this is how the students will use it or see it. First of all, you have to tell them to download the app. Unitar in their phones. And I'll show you here in the video how they access it and how they see it. Once they are in the app, they can scan the picture. They can scan it from the computer screen or from their books or their printed page. And this is what will happen. All the things that I've inserted, these elements will pop up like in augmented reality. There's a plane for part description. There's a video. You can see there how they actually. Today we're it. going to look at the various parts of the plane, and let's just start at the very beginning. I also inserted here like an additional worksheet in which students can use the vocabulary they've reviewed, and they're going to have to produce their own sentences and complete the different airplane parts. So this is an interesting thing you can do, not only for adapting existing material, but also if you want to go over this idea of flipped classroom. Uh, for example, we use it this way. We deliver this kind of project for students to work on their own. So then when they come to class or prior to the class, we can do a follow up and keep on working with this. So we think it's an interesting way to keep them motivated and to do something a bit interesting or more hands-on, right? So well, uh, in order to go highlighting some of the things behind all this adapting, uh, like Colosino said, the brain has been shaped by evolution to adapt and readapt to an ever-changing world, just what is happening <laughs> right now. So uh, we think it's important when you're adapting uh, to online lessons or materials, the fact of using interpersonal skills of being creative, uh, make sure you have always some surprise element, uh, especially now the use of multisensory activities that are sort of hands-on are very important in this con context, right? So we, this idea of using flipped classroom or self-discovery, we believe is an extra. And uh, obviously we need to understand that a variety of tasks and approaches is always a benefit because one size fit model of education we know doesn't work. It doesn't work face to face nor virtually. And it's important as trainers to have this keen perception and adaptability and pedagogical innovation to try to trespass the screen because now more than ever, it's very important the report we can build and the way we interact with our students becomes very significant. And basically it's about giving your materials a twist. You don't have to create all new from scratch, but to adapt it. And to make sure because of these issues related to connectivity and technology that some, sometimes are beyond us, that you have plans, plan A, B, C, but basically it's about taking it up a notch. So well, uh, in a nutshell, uh, from our perspective, migrating your lessons to an online format implies the articulation of diverse technological, pedagogical, and also methodological aspects, your careful observation your reflective teaching, you know, your perception of effectiveness, trial and error, survey your students, find out what works, what doesn't, and also confidence that it is not so difficult to implement. Maybe it is just a bit more time consuming, but it's also a matter of training or adaptation to us instructors to get better at it. So well, that will be all for me. I just want to thank you and leave you with this idea uh, that I had there on my screen, that if they can learn the way we teach, I think it's a good idea we teach the way they learn. So thank you for your time. And well, it's up to you then, Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. That was very interesting. Well, um, I don't know if you're ready, but there are a couple of questions for, for both of you. Um, 
Norma, one of the questions uh, that somebody asked, and I think that there was an answer posted uh, on the chat box, but just in case I will ask you all the same. Is it possible to use uh, quizzes? I mean, the, the app that you were talking about, well, you are using um, the same device uh, for, like for a conference call, or is it absolutely necessary to have two devices? Do you, do you see? Uh, because um, as for example, there are some other uh, apps like Kahoot, in which uh, perhaps you're using the computer for, for um, uh, the conference, but then students mm -hmm. need a phone, uh, like a second device. Okay. Uh, what, what about quizzes? Do you need two devices? Do students need two devices at the same time? I think this was the question. Please. Uh, we, uh, use with two <laughs> we use with two devices. Okay. We use with two devices. We have never tried to, to use the quizzes in the same device. Okay. So they have uh, the computer, okay, uh, mm -hmm. taking the class, and then they have their uh, cell phones to play with quizzes. Okay. Um, and one more question, uh, Norma, about the codes. Uh, how are the codes generated and do students uh, I mean, do they have to generate their own code or, or, or is it you that generates it for your students? No, the, the teacher is the, 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 the one who generates the code and it is a different code for each game. Although you are playing the same game with different groups of students, the code will always be different. It is not always the same code. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and Claudia, um, Somebody has asked a question about material specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, what if you have used or if you're using um, any book, uh, any, I mean, English training, uh, traditional book, perhaps for technicians, what is right. the material that you use? Well, we do have different level courses for technicians. So we use different material uh, in the different courses. For, um, let's say, intro level technicians with an A1, A2 level, we are using mostly technical English. Uh, this is the name of the, of the book. It's a printed book um, by Longman. Of course, that we also include additional material that is not in, in the books. And we also do sometimes selections because it's very generic. It's not just uh, aviation as specific, but for the technicians, especially when they are uh, low level uh, English, mm -hmm. let's say, um, the students, it really helps. Then for the other courses, we do have like an intermediate course that is called Fundamentals uh, of English for Maintenance Technicians. In that case, we have like a compilation. We do a selection of different textbooks as well. Mm -hmm. So we have created uh, a PDF for them. For example, the airplane parts image I show you uh, is in that course as well. And, and then for more advanced technicians, we also use um, aircraft for English for aircraft uh, and a selection of other uh, publications by FAA. So depending on the course level, we use uh, different kind of materials, but we never stick to one book or textbook per se, because we think it is necessary to include a variety of sources additionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. There's one more uh, question uh, from Blanca. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I guess that it's for both of you because, well, maybe Claudia, you've said something, but uh, how do students feel using uh, these kinds of tools, which are also new for students? And, and I suppose that there was a, some kind of a adaptation period, um, I suppose, I don't know. Right. Yes, well, you yes, want to go, go, Norma? <laughs> no, 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 it's good. You go. Come on. Okay. Okay, well, uh, initially it's kind of like surprising. It's like the off factor when you pop up this kind of game and it takes like about uh, five minutes to get into the rhythm, let's say, of the activity. But once they get it, uh, they really enjoy it. Like in the case of the one I showed first on gamification, uh, they laugh a lot and, and it, because it becomes kind of a competition, uh, but in the good sense, you know, uh, but they enjoy mm -hmm. it and, and they see it kind of uh, like a good icebreaker. So it really helps you on this way of creating a safe environment and something that is enjoyable. So it really activates their memory or cognition. 
And then in, uh, in terms of the augmented reality, they find it amusing, especially if they've never used it before, because they feel that their papers or their books you know, come to life. And, and it's a good way, an interesting way of, of having them do like a nice type of homework, not the typical mechanical practice, but to do something that you can use as flip classroom um, mm -hmm. content, right? So, uh, so far, it, we have had always very good response or, or very good feedback from them. Okay, well, thank yes, you. Yes, the, the same Don't happened to us. Yes, the response have been, has been very positive. And uh, they really enjoy this, uh, this, these games, that this way of learning in a different way. And uh, mm -hmm. it is attractive for them. Mm -hmm. And so through this, yes, we get the, these cues, all right, to make them learn through okay. games. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Thank you both. You've been great. Uh, if, if there are some more questions, please, I will ask everyone to keep on typing the questions because uh, we will try to address them at the end or later on uh, with, with a final activity, uh, we will tell you, okay? But we will continue now with presentation number three, all right? Antonella, are you ready? Antonella yes. um, has been, uh, well, has uh, more than 10 years of professional ESL teaching experience. She has founded uh, Aviation English ARD, a specialized agency in aviation English training services addressed to individuals, companies, academies, organizations, and universities. Um, she has also uh, worked for the Argentinian Safety Transportation Executive Board and she has complemented her experience working as a flight attendant um, to better understand the field. So we've got, a, uh, we've got here a, an English language expert and also an aviation expert, I guess. Antonella, over to you. Yes, thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for being there, for joining us today. So I'll share my screen so you can see the presentation. There you go. Yes, um, here we are. So, yes. All right, so as Cecilia has just said, uh, in this 15 minute talk, I will share our e-learning adaptation in the new world, uh, focused on English lessons for current crew members, right? So let's start with the first slide. All right, so uh, Cecilia has mentioned, um, we are based in Buenos Aires and we delivered in the past face-to-face -face lessons, um, specifically to um, cabin crew members to be, and these people um, um, learn English as a second language, yes? So we train them in cabin phraseology, in real problem solving scenarios, in customer service, and we train them how to face a cabin crew job interview. So I will share with you a short video about our classes in the past. So you have an idea how we worked and then I will tell you how the difficulties we found immigration, immigrating everything, uh, the content and the um, course type. lessons, the face-to-face -face lessons were really dynamic and we worked a lot with realia, with material, for example, with oxygen masks, with life vests, with seat belts, also with boarding passes 
and we created some scenarios, for example, the current, the current crew job interview. And uh, we also gave instant feedback to our students and we also assessed them. And indeed, the final assessment was uh, on a mocha plane. And this was really great because students were eager to go to the plane and practice what they've learned before and put into practice the skills and, and the theory they've learned in class. So it was a really big challenge for us, of course, um, in this new context uh, to migrate, I mean, that practical, uh, that practical lessons into something new for us that it was virtual. So um, it was difficult, as I said. So we went through the, the, the web and we started some, doing some research on how to migrate our lessons. So we found that there are some options, for example, Google Classroom and applications such as Kahoot, as we've already mentioned before in, other, um, in the other presentations. Also, you, we have resources such as YouTube, podcasts, Quizlet, and Zoom. And maybe you can find a way to um, blend uh, the type of course into some things, I um, mean, in, into Zoom and um, in an, in some using some applications, right? So you can um, make the lessons a little bit more interactive with the students. So um, depending on the skills and on the content that we had before, we decided to use this application that you will see now, which is Quizlet. So, ah, sorry, before uh, I would like to tell you that our presentations, for example, as regards vocabulary and current phraseology, um, we had all this material in PDF and in PowerPoint presentations. So we had to migrate also this uh, content. So let's focus on vocabulary, drilling, listening, spelling, phraseology, and problem solving situations. Um, so we found Quizlet. And why Quizlet? Because we, we think that it is very easy, to, very easy to use for students and for teachers. And um, you can program and edit. Um, you don't have to program and edit anything. You just have to upload the content and Quizlet will do it automatically for you. I mean, and moreover, it is, it's engaging and for students it's attractive. And um, you can also create classrooms which are private for your students, or maybe you can upload the information and anyone can enter to your classes. And it is very clear, the content is clear and organized, and you can create a classroom also. And uh, the good thing is that you sign up and it's for free. And if you would like to pay some more money, you have other plugins that you can enjoy. And the good thing for us was that it's compatible for mobile phones and tablets. So I will show you a little bit more of this, the use of this application. So this is a dashboard, the home dashboard, when you sign in as a student or as a teacher. You can create the English for cabin crew, for example, in this case, lessons. Um, so we created some units, as, you, as I'm showing you here. So let's focus on the first unit, which is, in our case, welcome on board. So um, you can see the title, the student can see the title of the unit, so it's very clear. And on the left, you have the options of the of study, and the student can also play, right? So this, let's go full screen. This is the how the students see the flashcard. So you can edit the flashcard, you can write whatever you need to write. And it also has audio. So it's an audio bot, but the student can also listen to the pronunciation of the, let's say, phrase. So for example, what's my seat number? What's my seat number? It's 13J. So remember that this is for students who learn English as a second language. Where's my seat? Walk along the cabin, go past the toilet and your seat is on your left. All right, so Quizlet shows if you go well with this and you study, um, for example, in this case, we upload 18 terms 
And the, the student, the good thing about this is that student can start over the flashcards and do it uh, as many times as they want and study them as many times uh, as they want. So I will show you now another type of exercise. For example, you have the answer. It's a 13J and the student has to find the correct question for that answer, right? For example, he will, okay, so he, the, the answer he provided with was correct. Let's see an example in which he misses the answer. So Quizlet will show you, like, will show it like this. For example, you have an emoji, study this one, and you have the correct option and what the student has chosen, right? For example, the mistake he made. And he can redo the exercise if he would like to, for example, right? So another example, you can practice spelling or- I'm afraid of flying. It has to read like the dictation. Let's take into, the into account that this is for um, an English one level, right? And then the student can follow up the tracking record of the student also. And what is interesting about this, the test, you don't have to program anything. So you upload the content and Quizlet will automatically create the test for you. So it's really time saving. For example, this is question and answer. We have here another option of matching questions, yes. So for example, he has to write the correct letter. Quizlet also provides you with multiple choice questions or uh, true or false if you would like to. So I think it is quite complete if we want to teach vocabulary or maybe phraseology, right? Or if your students have to practice uh, spelling or, li or some listening. This is this could be useful. And I'm showing you here uh, the grade, for example, of the student that the student got, the 17% of out of 100. And if he would like, he can um, go over the test again or the exercise again. And this is a game, right? For example, he has to join. And at the same time, he will also um, practice uh, the phraseology, yes? By reading uh, the content, he's learning um, the current phraseology. All right, so let's go on. All right, so if you would like an upgrade, Quizlet provides you with other options. For example, you can upload your own images if you have photographs that you would like to upload. For example, we used a bank of images, which, which is free, or you can also record um, your own audios instead of using the, the audio bot, yes? All right, um, it was also a challenge for us migrating our existing material to uh, making it more attractive for students. And so the only thing I, want, I would like to, to, to tell you, to share with you is that maybe uh, when you create some um, content in PowerPoint slides, take into account to use some icons or, or, or to follow the same uh, color combinations and just take into account to use uh, some type typography, specific typography, which is clear to the eye of the student and also the teacher. Um, let's use some resources such as colors. For example, in this exercise, we um, train them how to write a mini essay for interviews, for example. And here we have a reference chart and we use some colors um, to teach them how to use adjectives or the topic sentence or how to, how to use linking words. So this could be useful to provide them with some examples. And then they have to write their, their own essay. And um, here is the instruction. I think that it is really clear to understand. And well, in the case of grammar, for example, we teach um, some grammar structures we use on the plane. 
And also, again, the same thing, take into account to use the same color or the same typography or something attractive for their eyes. So, as regards to students' experience, the comments we received uh, is that uh, they were happy to go on learning despite the pandemic. Um, they say that the practice in Quizlet specifically is really interactive. They found it really useful. And the good thing is that they can take the course again and to refresh the content and vocabulary whenever they want. And um, they, they also claim that the instructions and the, the visual thing is really clear. So it makes it easier for them to, to learn in, with this application uh, specifically. And the negatives that we found is that, or they found also, is that the connection problems with the internet service provider, or they are unhappy uh, because they cannot go to the MOCA plane to, to put into practice what they've learned. And um, also they claim that lacking of a home office space um, is something um, sometimes is a, a cons because they don't feel like being in a classroom environment. And the positives of the teacher experience is that the course scope is much wider. I mean, any student from the world can join Quizlet or can join your LMS platform or any other device that you use to teach. And that everything remains recorded is very useful for us because we can go over that and then we can provide them students with feedback. We can, I mean, it's on your on the software in, in your laptop. So uh, it's really useful. And uh, we think that um, if we know, I mean, I mean, if two teachers of the three that we work together know how to use or we learn how to use technology, it speed ups the process of the team dynamics. For instance, we have some short meetings in Zoom and or we, we, we go over some research and we propose some applications to use and we try, uh, we try them and then uh, this speeds up the let's say the, the dynamics and the negative is that well human interaction uh, is not possible at least here in Argentina for the time being uh, so we have to do it we have got to go online and um, sometimes you need some training of course you have to join some webinars whatever you find useful to to improve I mean the, to, to, to improve um, using technology because it's not easy and we have to, to face this challenge. And also we found some, we find some connection problems with internet service provider. Uh, so our message is that um, with motivation, enthusiasm, uh, you can create good lessons um, and you don't have to pay anything. You just have, you have to go and explore some sample APPs or some ideas. You can also copy some ideas and then paraphrase uh, or, or, or use it for your own, um, let's say, for your own purpose. And let's not to forget that pedagogy, clarity, aims, technology, technology resources, sorry, and engagement are key factors to provide a rewarding and successful lesson experience, both for teachers and for students. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope you find it useful. Thank you, Antonella. Yes, I, I think that they have. <laughs> Later on, we will uh, discuss some of the questions, okay? But now we will go to our fourth presentation. Uh, this will be uh, led by Cristina Barbe. Cristina is a former ESL teacher, okay? And a head of the Argentinian Air Force um, school, language school, for more than 25 years, okay? She has also been certified as an interlocutor and a rater by our Civil Aviation Authority. She has wide experience in Aviation English material development and is currently the director of Come Fly With Me, a private academy for Aviation English training in the city of Córdoba in Argentina. Okay, so welcome Chris and over to you now. Thank you very much, Ceci. Thank you very much, Norma, for this invitation. And of course, thanks, Mike, for your um, invitation to this webinar. Uh, well, uh, let me share my screen with you, uh, my presentation. And really, this is a pleasure to see how many people are joining and uh, how many of us are involved in this question of teaching English. 
uh, to the different agents involved in uh, aviation. Um, when, I, when I decided to choose a title for this presentation, I said light camera action because this was what happened to us uh, moving from the classroom to the screen. Even when I had already started with um, online classes and I also had this private institute working with another colleague, um, the, the greatest challenge was to move those students into an online uh, format. Um, the aim on the objective and the approach we normally handle is through uh, games, activities that create a nice positive atmosphere um, that makes students or helps students to relax, uh, to be motivated and, and to, to, to feel comfortable in an environment that would uh, make them the chance to speak, to show their best and to help them, I mean teachers, um, have a chance to help them improve what is not so good. Um, but always uh, having in mind that the idea was to approach uh, this gaming environment uh, for teaching. And this was the, the biggest challenge because it's not the same in the classroom we had, uh, we have, which is closed now, <laughs> but uh, we had a lot of activities, games um, that we had to take into the screen now. So moving from the classroom to the screen implied analyzing a lot of challenges. Um, with the online classes, we were using normally uh, Skype, um, but well, the pandemic started and everybody was uh, connected. We, we had connectivity problems as all of us mentioned. And these challenges we faced were very similar uh, to the challenges that teachers around the world are sharing. So the first one was to go beyond Skype and Zoom and other platforms. And the way was to adopt a, a new platform, a paid one um, that a friend offered. And I'm very um, thankful to that. It's called Cisco WebEx, uh, which is very similar to um, Zoom. Then to adapt the materials from classroom uh, to online training was another big challenge that demanded, as Antonella said, a lot of research, a lot of work, uh, a lot of hours trying to find the way to recreate our classroom activities into the online format. Um, this was a way also to keep the students attention because for the students it was uh, kind of comfortable not to move from their houses to our classroom. But the problem was that um, as Claudia said, um, they are not very keen on the use of technology. <laughs> So at the beginning, this was a big challenge for the students too. We shared this challenge, but well, trying to uh, get together to show them how uh, this technology was a new way to interact and learn um, was a positive aspect. Um, creating a, a safe environment for them while learning in the, in the classroom was normal for us. It was not, and it was new, for the screen environment. And we found that playing, make them, making them feel safe and comfortable was the way. So there our <laughs> um, challenge started in taking some time to analyze how to organize one of the sessions, each session in groups, whether in groups or one-to-one -one, uh, in the online format. First of all, we analyzed um, the learner needs. Uh, if, they, if they were training to keep up with their language because they already had their um, language proficiency certification or test, um, and pilots that were actually flying so they keep up with the language. Uh, another group were pilots, young pilots, ab initio pilots training uh, to, to get their uh, test in the future. And the other group was a group of controllers that were also uh, working on the same uh, way. We analyzed that we're creating everything from scratch, new material from scratch, was something impossible to do from one week to the other because we were not prepared for this. So 
um, we decided to reuse known and proven methods and resources that we already had. Um, and this implied creating materials for the classes. Like we started with um, PowerPoint presentations, activities that we already had to use in the class, but in the online format. Uh, including new visual and attractive activities um, was difficult because you have to research, you have to look for the material, and you have to convince your students that this is useful and fun. Uh, we did, we, we tried to, we, we consider that pilots are particularly visual learners. Um, that's the way they work. Um, the, those are the senses they, they, they use more. So we, we thought that being attractive in color in the type was an issue. Um, the material also had to be designed for learning in a quick and easy way. And when I mean quick, it's not that uh, they had to learn and comply with a certain number of um, uh, learning content in a week or two, but quick in the sense that they could perceive after a session that they had acquired uh, some knowledge. And easy because they want, uh, we, we wanted them to enjoy and to um, make them feel that it was not so difficult to have an online class. But we were convinced about this, not the students, and that was a, a challenge. Uh, reflecting on improvement was a permanent uh, process. Uh, using and reusing and adapting and readapting the activities, it, it, when we discussed if they worked or not, uh, in which aspects, so we were, trying uh, all the time and correcting uh, those same activities, improving them uh, according to the students' um, comments, reactions, because we involved students in this, asking them through polls if they, how they felt about the activity, how they enjoyed it or not. So this was uh, very, very important. So when we uh, decided to resign our lessons, we thought that they demanded a lot of planning. Um, the support the students would need, not only from the technological uh, aspect, but also from the um, psychological, emotional uh, aspect. So we had to be supportive. We had to be flexible with the students, um, patient when uh, during the process, uh, they had to adapt to this new environment. So after the planning of this, uh, delivering the support, implementing the, the assessment of what we were doing was a task for every session. So as to provide the students with this idea that they were le really learning and they were not just online and listening to a teacher because this demanded a change, uh, a bigger change than the one in the classroom. Um, sessions are student-centered. Uh, we are just facilitators of this, and they are the center of the process. So um, assessing this took different forms. Um, we didn't want to have uh, repetitive um, classes um, with the same format, so we, we provided them with a variety of formats. Sometimes we started with games, uh, with a different warm-up activity, or with a poll, et cetera, et cetera. And the evaluation um, process uh, was very simple. Uh, we limited it to what can students do. And from that, if they needed some extra time, we would go back, devise, design new activities and go back again in the process to start again in the plan, to go back again to the planning uh, step. So, um, uh, completing this um, circle, this cycle, uh, was very useful for us because it helped us organize the way we wanted to uh, consider this learning process. Uh, pilots, uh, controllers, and we all know this, learn in different ways. They're not just common students from secondary schools where the environment is different. Uh, so here we had not only that these students learn in a different way, they're visual learners, basically, and auditory learners too, but also the environment they were getting used to. So, uh, 
I, I want to, to devote more time um, to showing you this um, online tool that we uh, started using. We, we used many, but I want to share this one with you because I think it's very simple. Uh, I think it's friendly and I think it's a tool that you can use tomorrow in class if you want because it doesn't demand too much time. Um, one of them among all the, the tools was to design a tool to make them talk, to practice speaking. Uh, practicing speaking was um, a, a way to help them feel comfortable in this environment. We took notes about the different uh, mistakes they could have to make some remedial work uh, in the coming classes. Uh, for which we used uh, a tool called uh, Hot Potatoes. Uh, it's an easy program that will be um, in, a, in a link that I will send to, to, to Cecilia to share with you. Uh, but basically, this one was a speaking activity. And if you uh, let me, I will share this uh, tool called, called Work Wall that has um, several advantages because you have to simply register with your account, with your uh, Gmail, Facebook account, or any social network account uh, for free. Now, uh, when you enter here, you will create some activities and I will share with you one and show you why I think this is a very versatile, useful um, tool to use in class. It doesn't require a lot of time, preparation time, and you can use it in, in the same activity in different ways. So are you watching my, my screen just to check if the connection is working? Yes, please. Yes. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. So when you enter here, um, this tile, this is a particular real example of an activity that I use. Um, it could be used as a warm up um, to finish a class, as a game, uh, in case of groups as a competition, one, one group asking, uh, challenging the other one. Uh, so in this case, it's a game of cards. And the way I use it is the following. Here in the cards, I wrote some content, questions in this case. I make a deal there and the student uh, can see the question and answer it. Um, sometimes I play some, some limits, time limits for them to speak. Uh, just to push them and the students in this case have the chance to say shuffle if they don't want to answer the question. So I give them the possibility to choose whether they want to answer the question or not, but only once, right, during the game. So if they say shuffle, cards will be shuffled and we'll go to a deal again and he will get another question, right? So here you can create as many questions as you want. Uh, as, you, as you see, the questions are quite general because um, it could, they could be used for a warm up or to end up a class. Uh, tell me about an emergency you had or practice, et cetera, et cetera. I'll, I will give you a link so you can use this and that's another advantage of this activity. Right, now the funny thing here, and the, that's why I say it's, um, um, a versatile uh, tool is that if you create this activity and you go here to the next format, which is a random wheel and click there, your game, same content will take another format. In this case, the format will be a wheel. So we have the same questions uh, that we had in the card game, but now in the format of this wheel, which you can spin the student will get the question you can set a, a time limit he will answer and you can take it out so that when you spin again you are sure the next student will not get the same question right so if i spin again you see that question disappeared, right? Another advantage is that you have the time here marked in order to check how much of your class 
session you are using, how much time you are using. So if I go back to the same, uh, you can have the format of an open box with the same content again. So you open it, open it and you start playing. Students can choose a number and again, you have the same questions in another format. Um, or you go to the next one, you see, same question that was presented before in the cards or in the wheel. Now, a good advantage, um, there is another format here, which is called anagram, which in this case is not appropriate because it would be, if I show you, if you adapt it to this format, it would be very difficult for the students to order uh, such a question, you see. So it doesn't apply for this one, right? It would be absolutely different. But if you create a vocabulary activity, maybe in this format, it would work very well, right? Now, in a, you will have your activities here. But you can also you can also go to the search and in the search in the community, you will find that other teachers are also creating um, this uh, type of exercises and the collaboration uh, activity or uh, approach uh, does work. So you can share other teachers activities uh, with similar formats or in different ways and about different topics and about different levels. The issue is that sometimes you don't have too much material for aviation English, right? But there are some teachers producing and using it, so um, I have used this many times. Normally, this tip, uh, type of activity is used um, online. Uh, it could be with groups or it could be with one-to-one um, uh, -one classes. But, uh, and you can also have the chance to share the link right and ask the student to to do it alone it depends on the type of activity you get you you design now when when you choose one of these activities that could also be used for testing oral testing for example through questions um you have a disadvantage and i have to mention that uh in the free version you can only create five activities um it is true that you can edit the content very simply here. You edit the content, you change the questions, very simple as this, right? You add another question, you take some questions out. But if you get the paid uh, version, um, you, get, uh, you have to pay about $2 per month which is not very expensive and you can get more possibilities to have more activities already created. Um, however, in my case, we didn't adopt it. Uh, we didn't pay the, the a full subscription just because we have many tools as, as you have seen with the other presenters, um, you have many. So we thought that this was one way and we're using a variety of them so as to provide the students with different um, possibilities. Now, um, the use of this, uh, the results uh, of uh, using this type of activity created in our students something like um, a feeling of, um, a feeling of uh, success, I would say, because they felt they could do it, the, they felt they had the chance to play, at the same time, they had the chance to practice. And at the same time, they enjoyed what they were doing. So our students' um, um, reactions to these uh, activities, when we um, made some, some questions to them, and we tried to, as I said, reflect on which was uh, positive and which was not, uh, was that um, they were happy. Um, what's more, <laughs> they don't want to come back to face-to-face uh, -face classes. So I think I'm going to close the, the, the academy because the students just like this online format. But of course, it was a lot of work. Um, learning is about connecting the dots, 
uh, to existing knowledge uh, so that the students can build new knowledge on the previous knowledge they have, right? So it's a question of connecting things. And they felt that with these activities, they could do it. So for us, it was very motivating to get that feedback. Uh, and that pushed us to continue uh, doing a lot of research. And it would be great to share all these things um, for in the future uh, with, with other teachers, because I'm sure all of us have been doing the same thing. So um, I don't know if I am okay with the time, Ceci, but- yes, You're just on time. <laughs> all right, good, thank you. So um, I believe that um, something that, and I'm convinced of that, something that I was told when I, I, I graduated as a teacher, uh, we always have a teacher we will never forget. And she always told, make learning memorable. Uh, if we make learning memorable and students can remember it just because it was fun, just because they made a mistake and it was fun for everybody, particularly when they invent words <laughs> and they have so much fun and we take mistakes in that way because that is the approach we are convinced works with them. Um, we uh, always go back to Benjamin Franklin who said, tell me and I will forget. And there are many versions of this phrase. Show me mm -hmm. and I may remember, involve me and I learn. And that involved me was uh, one of the things that we really worked hard on. Uh, it was not our responsibility. The pandemic was not our responsibility. It was something that happened and affected the whole planet. So uh, in some cases, many teachers felt that the responsibility was thrown to them. Uh, okay, just do what you want, what you can. You are responsible for teaching. Go ahead, invent, work a lot, stay long hours at night. And we, we took it in the other way. We involved our students in this research too. Uh, that's how many students came up with some activities or some apps uh, showing us, look, we can use this, we can use that. And so we involved them in this process of finding new ways to approach this online um, structure, format, and best of all, challenge. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope you can use it in your next class. It's very easy to do it. Don't Tomorrow. be scared, just try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Well, uh, as uh, we did after the first two presentations, we're going to have a couple of uh, questions. Um, there is, uh, Antonella, one very interesting question from Michael. Uh, I don't know if you've had a look at the chat, uh, yes. but he's asking about the testing, the testing service uh, in Quizlet, is it really uh, reliable? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, yes, it is. Let me tell you, Michael, the, the following thing. Um, we use Quizlet just to present some vocabulary and phraseology. So the test is for, is for students to practice what they've, they've practiced before, right? But apart from that, we deliver online lessons. I mean, face-to-face -face lessons, but I mean, through Zoom, because we think that the, um, the, the course is um, like better like this, because we can see the student, we can express what we want to the student, and we can have it, his or her feedback. And uh, also they can um, practice their, their speaking skills. So we have other uh, tests for them. For instance, we create a situation and they have, for example, to work uh, in groups through the breakout rooms, or maybe uh, you can use Google Classroom and maybe you can um, write instruction for them in a PDF or in a dot .doc document so they can prepare that in their homes and then they present that in, in class and you can correct them, let's say, through Zoom. This is the way we found, uh, we just found recently. And um, yes, and the content in Quizlet, uh, let me be clear because I have some questions like this before uh, from other um, friends and other teachers. Uh, the content that you upload in Quizlet is yours, is your creation. You have to upload the content. So as regards content, if that's, I mean, our responsibility. 
And then Quizlet is a way to practice, to, to learn, I mean, vocabulary and phraseology. I mean, we uh, found it useful just for that. But then we had our material in PDF and in PowerPoint and in other sources. Okay. Thank you, Antonella. Well, I hope uh, we have answered your, your question, Michael. Um, Chris, uh, there is a question here from Lorena, um, especially about uh, the use of um, the tool you have shown. Does it ever happen to you that your internet connection perhaps makes it a little slow, slows down the game and, and then consuming extra class time? How, how do you manage, I suppose uh, she means, how do you manage that? Well, not really, because uh, you use it independently from the platform. So it's just a link you access. Um, mm -hmm. I've got it in the Google uh, toolbar, and so I access it immediately. It doesn't take any time loading. I'm already logged in, so I don't have any kind of problems in, in sharing that. Now, if the students, uh, and this, again, has to do with uh, connectivity, I may have the best platform, but if the students mm. have a very low connection, that is not something you can solve or deal with, right? So yes, the, there, was a, there was some other question about that because it, it, about a, a, having a plan B, well, this could be for everyone, having a plan B in case internet connection does not work. Yes, if it is your internet connection, we, we are in trouble, but if it's the students, right. then... There is nothing you can do in that case. I've, mm. start, I, I've had cases where I started my class in this... Uh, platform and then it didn't work so we ended up with a conversation by whatsapp which is not the best because you don't always have all your tools uh, in the cell phone right and it depends if the student has an iphone or another type of telephone so this is very mm -hmm. difficult to carry out so at the beginning i just make sure the students have a good connection um but this is something that can happen anyway <laughs> right okay well, thank you. There, there are a couple uh, more of more questions, but I believe we are running out of time. And I would like to share with you now, if you allow me. Well, you know that um, everything comes to an end, okay? But before we leave, I'd like you to pay a ticket. Yes, perhaps you thought that this was a, a free webinar. No. It is not. You must pay now. Now, please don't uh, don't go away. Don't disappear. Everybody can, will leave. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, um, I, I'm sharing here a, and I will share it now through the chat, a, a link to Padlet. Perhaps you are familiar with the um, with the link. The idea is this, uh, as, um, as you remember, one of our objectives today was to enlarge this community. Christina was saying, just saying now, I'm sure most of us, if we are training and, and, and we are teaching aviation English, perhaps uh, we are going through similar experiences. Today, we have heard uh, four uh, professionals uh, talking about the, the experiences that they have gone through, okay? And if you uh, click there, if you go inside a Padlet, now I will do that in a minute, um, we'd like you, we'd like you to uh, leave us a message. What is it that you are thinking of right now? After listening to these uh, experiences, after um, having a look at all the a wide range of possibilities that there are, a, a wide range of tools that we can apply in our uh, online lessons. Uh, what are you thinking of? Uh, do you have questions? Or would you like to leave us a message? Please, can you go into Padlet? I will, I will share it with you now. Uh, but perhaps you can uh, already uh, leave us um, a message. If you go here, you see to the plus uh, at the right hand uh, bottom <laughs> part, well, there you, you can open uh, a new, you can open a new um, post, let's say, and leave us a question. This wall, which is a collaborative wall, will remain open for us, okay? For all, uh, for all of us who have, who have participated 
today. And as you can see, uh, the handouts of the four presentations we have heard are already there. So you can download them, you can keep them to yourself. And there you've got the links. Some people were asking about uh, um, if, if, we could get, if we could get the links to a certain application or somebody, somebody was asking if, if he could uh, download the examples. Well, there you've got, the, you've got the handouts with the main ideas, with the objectives, with the apps, how they were used and, and, and some of the results. So we invite you also to um, share with us perhaps some other ideas. Uh, as I insist on this, this will remain open. Uh, I, I have read that uh, Juliana, for example, you talked about Condere, uh, apparently a, a different app. Uh, perhaps uh, Juliana, if you, if you, uh, if you're interested, if you, if you would like to share with the whole community, you could write something very briefly about Condre. Well, it's, it's an app that personally I, I am not aware of, and uh, you can share, you can share with, with all of us. Um, well, I, I can't see if, if you are already typing in or not. Are you paying your tickets? Hmm, I can't see any tickets, so probably won't. Uh... Uh, Cecilia, can you post yes. the link in the chat for everyone? I, I, I have already, uh, haven't you seen it? Wait, no. wait a second. I think it didn't come through, the Padlet oh, link. Sorry, thank you, Jennifer. No problem. And, and there, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I was making, I posted it to someone individually. I don't know why. Sorry about that. There you are. Okay. So, well, um, also, if you have uh, if you have any more questions, we would uh, we would be happy to read those questions to to provide an, an answer uh, or perhaps uh, a suggestion. And and well, uh, it's a way I, uh, we believe it's a way of uh, being in contact uh, and perhaps uh, sharing more and more uh, teaching experiences. Um, in the meantime, it's teaching online. Perhaps when we return to face-to-face -to -face, uh, uh, classes, uh, we could also continue sharing, why not? So this is the idea. I will see if I've, I've got some of the tickets now or not. I won't let you go. Okay, some people, some people are typing. Um, um, we hope we hope this has been uh, useful, interesting. Uh, one of the objectives also was that you could find um, that you could find a way, um, perhaps to to get ideas, to to feel uh, inspired in a way. And and well, I only have to say now, thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being such a such a nice audience. Thank you for flying with us. I hope you join us uh, next uh, next time. And sorry if we have uh, if you if we have uh, taken a bit more of your time today. Michael, would you like to um, say some final final words? Well, thank thank you. Cecilia, and thanks also Christina, um, Antonella, and Claudia, Norma, for, for sharing with us all these, these really interesting tools um, that I think are certainly going to be valuable for people to take on board and hopefully adapt, as you said, and, and adopt into some of their lessons in their online teaching. Very useful. Um, and I guess as we, as we keep going with this experience that maybe others can also, maybe using Cecilia's, her Padlet wall there, share some other tools and experiences as we go. So if I'm, if I'm right, Cecilia, you'll leave that uh, Padlet open. Is that right? Exactly, yes, yeah. for everyone. Okay. And I will, I will keep, we will, uh, we will keep an eye on it, okay? For, 
Yes, perhaps when you try, I don't know, imagine you try uh, augmented reality, uh, which I've never tried myself. Perhaps you can share the experience of how it went. Uh, it would be lovely to, to hear that. Great. Thanks. Thanks again. So um, I think this brings us to the end of this webinar for today. Um, but this is not the last webinar, of course. We've, we've got more coming. And in fact, the next one is about a month from now, the 27th of October. It's a slightly different topic, moving away from uh, the, the online teaching experience. It's, it's a new topic from, from a team in Brazil who are in the research group, the IKEA research group. It's using real aviation communication uh, to, to create tasks for learning. That's the first next of the, the next in the webinar. And there'll be a follow on to that, which is very also linked. Uh, both of them referring to corpus, based on corpus, which is, is creating, using real communication to create test tasks. So both of these are, are gonna be a little bit different, but hopefully stimulating, just as stimulating as, as today, I think you'll find. So join us again in a month, if you can and uh, stay tuned, I guess. Thanks everybody and uh, hope to see you again soon. See you soon. Thank you. See you soon, thank you. Thank you everyone, bye-bye. Thank, bye. bye thank you everyone, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you everyone.